So one of King's best throws is the Rolling Death Cradle. Not only is it stylish, but it's high damage, and once he starts rolling, it's unbreakable. However, the execution could be a little tedious. Well, I'm here to teach you the easy machete method. Even if you're a beginner, you'll be able to pull this off. Let's go. Hey, yo. You win, win. <laughs> All right, so let's begin our journey into mastering the rolling death cradle. So first and foremost, this is the way I do it. This is the way it works for me. Uh, if somebody else has a different way of doing it, good for them. But uh, mine has yielded really good results. Um, so before we get started, there's one thing that I like to do that is going to make things a lot easier, and that is uh, I like to map my shoulder buttons, my top buttons. So this is what you want to do. LP and LK is going to be L1. LKRK is going to be R1. RPRK is going to be R2. And LPRP is L2. The reason you want it this way is because that's essentially all the commands you're going to need for the rolling death cradle. So L1, R1, R2, L2. Alright, so next we're going to talk about what button buffering is just a little bit just uh, for those of you who are new to the game or uh, you don't know what I'm talking about basically button buffering is a type of I guess hidden game tech that the game doesn't tell you right off the bat that the game does not explain to you uh, it sounds fancy but all it essentially is it it allows you to press a button and hold and basically store that command and then all you gotta do is press another button and instead of having uh, for example in this case I'm, I'm gonna press uh, square which is uh, 1 followed by X which is 3 and if you press them both together you get your left throw So where button buffering comes in handy is that instead of uh, pressing them both together, you can press one, hold it, and then whenever you need the throw, all you got to do is approach him and press X or three, and you have your throw without having to press two buttons at the same time because you're technically already holding the first one. That second button, instead of a uh, reading as just a regular three command just a regular kick the game registers it as you press in both buttons at the same time so that's what buffering is so the rolling death cradle is actually three separate throws and I am going to break down all three throws using a button buffering to make things a lot easier so the first move is the arm breaker is the rolling death cradle does come out of the arm breaker combo so so, so the way I set this up the, it looks like this this is the arm breaker and the way I set this up using button buffering is during gameplay you know I'll throw a jab or I'll throw a, a down forward one or a back one or what have you Whatever it is, you know, uh, up, up back one. Whatever it may be. The point is that I am going to hold that button. I am going to hold square. So next, all I got to do is press the directional commands while still holding square. And then reach down and press circle. And this should read as the arm breaker command like this.
I'm not letting go of square. The whole time I've been holding square. And I'm just really pressing the directional commands. And then pressing uh, circle afterwards. Because I'm already, I've been storing square. Alright, so that's the first move. The second move is the chicken wing face lock. And that's a uh, triangle square and then triangle plus square plus X all at the same time. This is where button buffering really begins to shine. So instead of just pressing uh, the commands separate by themselves, you're gonna buffer pretty much all the commands. Uh, the initial one is going to be triangle, so you're going to press it and hold it. Don't let go of triangle. And then press square, and now you should be holding two buttons. So don't let go of square once you press it. So now you're holding both triangle and square. And now all you got to do is reach down and press X. And the game is going to read it as you pressing all those three buttons at the same time. Because you're, you're buffering. So once again, press triangle, don't let go of triangle. Now you're gonna press square, do not let go of square and triangle. And then all you gotta do is reach down and press X and there you have it. So the timing for this, it's actually pretty easy. The way I play, cause I play on pad, I actually use uh, my thumb and I just kind of roll it on onto all three buttons to where I'm covering them uh, by the end of the sequence so now you have this move and all you gotta do is add the next one and I'm using button buffering and it makes things a lot easier so you're more than halfway there now. So now we're gonna move to the actual rolling death cradle. And if you look at it, upon first glancing up at it, it seems like it's a lot to take in and a lot to input in such a short amount of time. And it can be. But this is the reason why I had you set up the buttons the way I did. Because if you look at the commands, instead of uh, seeing, for example, the first one is 1 plus 3, the second one is uh, 3 plus 4, and so on and so forth, you should think of it in your head as, well, that's just L1 followed by R1 followed by R2 followed by L2 and then buffering X at the end. So basically, this is your actual command now for the Rolling Death Cradle. L1, R1, R2, L2. Without letting go of L2, you're just going to tap X and you should get the Rolling Death Cradle. So the way I do it, I actually don't do it as fast as uh, you might think. The command is... You actually have plenty of time to... Uh, do the entire command this is about the speed that I normally do it in and it registers every single time so that's about as fast as I, I do it I don't you know I don't, I don't go all fast like that um, I have plenty of time this, that's that's really about as fast as I I actually do it and the game still picks it up so now You just put it all together. You're gonna take that move and you're gonna add the second one. And then after the second one, you got your rolling death cradle. Again, that is L1. Oops. Let me back up. L1, R1, R2, L2, X. 
Without letting go of L2, you're just gonna press X. So again, L1, R1, R2, L2, X. And when you put it, you know, in that whole sequence, you should get the rolling death cradle. Pretty much 100% of the time if they don't break out of the first two moves anyway. Alright, so the cool thing about the move itself is that the whole sequence, it does 110 damage. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of damage. You can pretty much do two of these and kill someone off. Um, but, let's see. If you have rage, I think it does 120 damage, so... You might think that 10 points is just 10 points, but it's actually uh, quite a good chunk. So this is the reason why I like to button buffer. Because in my own playstyle, I'll throw a jab or maybe throw something like this. Just a little three-hit combo. And then I'll follow it up with an arm breaker. So I I'm, I'm setting up my, my arm breaker with one of these moves that involves uh, pressing square. You know, so that when the time comes that I see the opening that I can move in for the arm breaker the arm breaker is practically halfway done and all I gotta do is uh, input the rest and I'll show you examples of that in a minute like you'll see how, how I'm setting it up alright so a couple of things about button buffering and the way that I set up my control uh, the way that I mapped out my shoulder buttons actually makes it a lot easier to pull off pretty much all of King's chain grabs um, which if anybody is interested in later on uh, I could actually do more tutorials on how I pull off the chain grabs um, using this same uh, button mapping method I guess I'll show you some examples now on how I'm setting it up and I'll let you see that it actually works you know me throwing jabs or throwing some other moves and buffering that initial arm breaker command So let me talk about one final thing, and that is timing. Um, the most difficult part in learning how to play king and pulling off the chain throw successfully is going to be the timing. And the way it was explained to me by someone better than me is that uh, you want to input the next command right before you hear the bone snapping uh, sound. You can hear how uh, when he does the arm breaker, there's like a bone crunching sound. So you want to input the next command before that sound uh, is triggered or whatever. Even with the rolling death cradle, I've inputted the command right as the sound plays or right before the sound plays. So that's kind of the way to gauge uh, your timing if you're messing this up. Um, honestly. I spent maybe uh, 
about four or five hours learning King's uh, chain grabs from scratch and this is how I develop my button mapping how I figure that it works best for me and I think like out of all the ways that I've seen uh, you know people doing chain throws and tutorials this is probably the easiest way that um, I found that actually works so the timing is gonna be right before the bone snapping or uh, it moves like like this one for example you want to input it before uh, King slams him on the ground like the second move is already input it before he slams him on the ground same for that so it's almost like you got to be like one move ahead pretty much every single time So thanks for watching my video, uh, my name is Machete, and I hope you guys learn how to do the Rolling Death Cradle soon. Uh, definitely let me know if you guys are able to pull it off the way I do it. This is Machete's way, so this is like the Machete method of playing King. Um, if you guys like this video, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you would like to see more tutorials on how to play King, uh, let me know. and. I'll whip something up real quick and show you how to do the rest of the chain throws uh, using the machete method. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, Y'all stay safe out there. Go win tournaments. Uh, no mercy. Peace.